Hello and good day. Welcome back to our class. This is Teacher Onidi Guzman and our topic for today is Representation of Functions and Relations for General Mathematics Grade 11. Whenever we talk about relation, it is a rule that relates values from a set of values called the domain to the second set of values called the range. A relation is a set of ordered pairs x, y. On the other hand, function is a relation where each element in the domain is related only to one value in the range of some group. Take note that it is a set of ordered pairs x, y such that no two ordered pairs have the same x value but different y values. Using the functional notation, we can write that f of x is equal to y. Read as f of x is equal to y. We can write a function rule. So for example, write the function rule for the table. So we can see here the number of classes correspond to the cost. So we can say that you pay 24 pesos for two glasses. So 48 pesos. We have 48 pesos for four glasses. Then we have actually 120 pesos for 10 glasses. So we can say that each glass costs 12 pesos. So cost is equal to 12 times the number of glasses. So therefore the function is f of x is equal to 12 times x into symbol. Look at our example number 2. Write the function rule for the table. So we have here the values of x and y. So we have negative 2, positive 2, 0, 0, 2, 2, negative 3, negative 1, 1, 1, and 3. So observe that the values of the dependent variable y are always corresponding to positive outcomes, the input values. So we can say this relationship has special name, which is the absolute value. So therefore, we can say in symbol, okay, we have f of x is equal to absolute value of x. Let's have example number three. So May has an internet service that currently has a monthly access fee of 1,200 and a connection fee of two pesos per hour. Represent her monthly cost as a function of connection time. So, we will let x is equal to the number of hours may spend on the internet in one month. Y y is May's monthly cost. So, the monthly P is 1,200 with an hourly charge of 2 pesos. So, we can say that the total cost is equal to the plot P plus hourly P times the number of hours. So in symbol, we can say this one, y is equal to f of x plus the plot p is 1,200 plus 2 pesos, okay, times the number of hours. So this is the function rule for number 3. So let's move on to representation of relations. So we have actually four. So the first of which is the ordered pair. So here, which of the following relations are functions? So we have f is equal to 1, 3, 4, 1, 2, 0, 7, 2. Then we have g is equal to 3, 2, 4, 4, 3, 3, 8, 9. We have h is equal to 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5. So which of the following relations are functions again? So if we will analyze, the relations are actually f and h because no two ordered pairs has the same x value but different y values. On the other hand, g is not a function because 3, 2 and 3, 3 are ordered pairs with the same x value but different y values. Let's move on to the second type of the representation of relations. So that is actually the tables of values. As you can see here, we have 
the order pair between the values of x and the value of y. So we have negative 3, negative 10, negative 2, negative 5, negative 1, 2, 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, and 4, 6. So we can say that this is a function. This is one-to-one -one correspondence. On the other hand, if we have here the table of values for x and y, we have 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, 4, and 4, 5. So we can say this is only a mere relation. This is one-to-many correspondence. Looking at the table, there is duplication in the domain. So the element 1 in x is matched to 3 elements in y. Let's move on to the third type of representation of relation. So that is through mapping diagrams. So for our example, which of the following mapping diagrams are or represents functions? We have here uh, relation f, relation g, and relation h. So as we can see, so the input is uh, an output. So 10 is mapped to 15, 20 is mapped to 45, 30 is mapped to 25, 40 is mapped to 35. For G, we have actually two maps to 20, two is also mapped to 40, four is mapped to 40, as well as three mapped to 30. And finally, for H, we have A is mapped to X, B is mapped to Y, C is mapped to Y also, D is mapped to Z. So, if we will look into this one, so the relations F and G are functions because the value in Y, okay, is unique for a specific value of X. So, the relation H is not a function because there is at least one of the elements in X for which there is more than corresponding Y value. For example, x is equal to 2 corresponds to y is equal to 20 or 40. So let's move on to the fourth type of representation of relations. So we call this one as the vertical line test. So stress dot, a graph represents a function if and only if each vertical lines intersect the graph at most once. So look, look at these graphs. We have A, B, C, and D. Which of the following graphs represents functions? So if we will have the vertical line like this, we have here. So this line will touch only this graph only once, as well as for the B. Okay. So if we will draw a line vertical to the graph B, so it will touch only once, as well as for C. However, for graph D, so if you have here this line, vertical line, it will touch the graph in, at two points. So we have here one and two. So we can say that graphs A, B, C are graphs for of functions, while D is not because the vertical line intersects the graph more than once. So let's recall the important concepts such so relations are rules that relate to values one from a set of inputs and the second from the set of outputs also functions are rules that relate only one value from the set of outputs to a value from the set of inputs also if we say domain domain of a relation is the set of all positive values that the variable x can take talking about the domain of function so let's identify the domain for each relation using the set builder notation. So for number one, we have actually y is equal to 3x minus 2. So we can say that we can use all values of x. So we can say that x such that x is a real number. Letter B, I have here y is equal to 3x squared minus 4x. So meaning to say I can use all the values of x and it will satisfy the value of y so therefore x such that x is element of real number on number uh, letter c x squared plus y squared is equal to one so this is a circular function so i can only use x such that x is a real number provided that x is greater than 
or equal to negative 1, but less than or equal to negative 1. So those are the values of x that will satisfy the given equation. On letter D, y is equal to square root of x minus 1. Notice that I will have this expression I will consider only from 0 to positive. So think of a number that will make this expression 0 to positive. So that is why the domain is actually we have here x such that x is a real number provided that x is greater than or equal to 1. Next one, we have y is equal to 2x plus 1 all over x minus 1. So this is actually a rational function. So meaning to say the denominator should not be equal to 0. Otherwise, it will be undefined. So think of a number class that this one will not equal to 0. So that is why if we have here x such that x is a real number provided that x is not equal to 1. And finally, y is equal to the greatest integer function, okay, plus 1. So take note, this is the symbol for the greatest integer function. So we can say that x is such that x is an element of real number. Let's have application. So let's consider this. Give a function c that represents the cost of buying x mil if 1 mil cost 40 pesos so if we will analyze since so each mil cost 40 pesos then the cost function is c of x is equal to 40x wherein x is the number of mils let's have another application so 100 meters of fencing is available to enclose a rectangular area next to a river so as you can see the figure here this is the river and this is the enclosed rectangular area. So give a function that can represent the area that can be closed in terms of x. So again, this is our x, the length, and this is the width. So let's recall that the area of rectangular enclosure is area is equal to x times y. So we will write this as the function of x. So since only 100 meters of fencing is available, so we can say that x plus 2y is equal to 100. So take note this is y, and this is also another y. So that is why we will have here x plus y plus y or x plus 2y equals 100. So if we will uh rename y so this is actually y is equal to 100 minus x divided by 2 or if we will simplify this this is equal to 100 divided by 2 is 50 then we have x divided by 2 this is actually 0.5 x or 1 half x so thus the area is equal to the value of x times the value of y which is equal to 50 minus point 50 or 0.5x so we have the area is equal to x times 50 minus 0.5x so let's move on to another application so this is actually a piecewise function if we say again piecewise functions these are the groups or functions that we will put together so that is why we call it piecewise function. So let's consider the problem. So uh, a user is charged 300 pesos monthly for a particular mobile plan, which includes 100 free text messages. Now suggest in excess of 100 are charged 1 peso each. Represent the monthly cost for text messaging using the function t of m, where m is the number of messages sent in a month. So if we will analyze this, the cost of text messaging can be expressed by the piecewise function. So again, so this T of M, so we will you will pay only 300 pesos if you will consume, okay, M, which is the number of messages from 0 to 100. However, if you will access more than 100, so you have now your 300 plus messages. Okay, if 
m is greater than 1. Okay, so this is actually your piecewise function. Let's have another example of the piecewise function. So let's consider problem number 12. So a jeepney ride costs 8 pesos for the first 4 kilometers and each additional integer kilometers adds 150 to the pair. Use piecewise function to represent the jeepney pair in terms of distance in kilometers. So the input value and the distance and the output is the cost of jeepney pair. If f of d represents the pair as a function of distance, the function can be represents, uh, represented as follows. So again, so this is the distance. So for the first 4 kilometers, meaning to say from 0 to 4 kilometers, you will pay only 8 pesos. However, there is an increment on top of, okay, 4 kilometers. So if your D is more than 4 kilometers, you have your 150 pesos for every okay, kilometer. So that is the nearest okay, or floor function. So again, now that this is the floor function applied to D, so the floor function gives the largest integer less than or equal to D. So say for instance, if I have the floor function of 4.1, this is the same also as the floor function of 4.9, which is equal to 4. So again, so that ends our discussion on functions. Again, this is Teacher Olin de Guzman. Do not forget to subscribe to my channel so that you will be notified about my new videos. Thank you.